Central Baptist Church Youth Ministry presents Getting to Know Central. Live from CBC Youth Ministry Studios. Today's host, Maya Hunter. With special guest, Pastor Anthony Riley. Let's get to know Central. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Okay, to start, um, what's your favorite Bible verse? My favorite Bible verse is actually a whole chapter, if you will. I think it's Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Um, that verse just has so many different meanings depending upon where I am, how I'm feeling. So Psalm 23 is definitely um, in the top three. Yeah. Yeah, that's my grandma. She made us memorize it one summer and we had to perform it in front of the whole church. It was, it's a really nice verse. Um, what made you want to be a pastor? So honestly, I did not want to be. Um, I wanted to be a lawyer so I could make money and be rich. And then I could donate some of my time to the church. Um, okay. That was my plan. But I tried to go to law school and do law courses in college. Um, I did well on those courses, but it just didn't fit into my schedule a lot of times. So I was able to take a lot of legal classes. All the religion classes became available to me. So I knew I wanted to do something with the church and I was involved. And so I said, well, God's opening doors in this area. So let's just walk through them and here we are. That sounds really interesting. What's the hardest thing about being a pastor? Ooh, just one thing? It could be many things. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, not a, it's not a bad quote unquote job. I love what I do. Yeah. I love being the pastor, being your pastor. But um, I think one is seeing people that you love and care about hurt. So one of the blessings and one of the burdens of my role is walking with disciples when they graduate from middle school or high school, but also when they lose a loved one, lose a pet, a pet dies, a family member dies. And to watch someone hurt is not something that anyone wants to do, but it's my privilege to walk with people when they do. Yeah, that's that's really cool. You know, it's it's great to help people out when they're hurting so they can do the same with you. And especially with God, God can do anything. That's right. That's right. You're right. Well, uh, so on Sundays, you know how you teach the sermon. What what do you guys do during the week? <laughs> and it's such a good question. So um, there is this misconception that I kind of hang out all week and pastors only work for an hour on Sunday, which is unfortunately, I mean, it would sound really nice, but it's not, it's not true. Um, so the week is full of number one, preparation. In order to prepare one sermon on Sunday morning, it can take me up to 24 hours. And of course, I like my sleep. So that means at least three days a week, I'm studying, writing, rewriting, researching, prepare for Sunday. That's just Sunday morning, plus Bible study. So definitely preaching, teaching, research is a major part of my week. Um, because you can't lead if you're not reading. And that's first of all, the word of God, the Bible, and then also the newspaper and other kinds of sources to be interdisciplinary. Um, other than that, lots of meetings, uh, lots of time to share my heart for ministry, to administrate, uh, my my inbox, my email uh, seems to always be overflowing. I thank God for my my executive assistant, but trying to email, talking on the phone with disciples who lost loved ones, and connecting in that way. So research, preaching, teaching, administration, meetings, um, internally at Central with community partners, and also being present with disciples uh, when they're in the hospital, when they're in time of bereavement as well. So it's a busy week. I would say the average week probably around 60 hours a week that I'm engaged in some wow. air ministry. And I'm always thinking about you in Central. So even when I'm not quote unquote on the clock and working, uh, I'm always the best. That's awesome. What advice would you give to kids who would want to be a pastor in the future? Ooh, let's see. I would say, number one, have fun. Have fun and enjoy life. Because I think sometimes um, you know, I can be I can be pretty serious sometimes, and if you see me from a distance, I can look kind of serious. 
I love to have fun. I'm a little goofball, a little corny, but you know, everyone can't be uh, a comedian, a real comedian. Um, but the, just the work seems so serious sometimes. Um, leading worship or praying and preaching uh, can be very serious, but still have fun. Don't lose um, your smile, don't lose kind of laughter because you get to youth ministry meeting, you get to Sunday morning. Worship should range all the human emotions throughout the week. You'll be happy, you'll be sad, you'll be frustrated, you'll be excited. You should feel all that with God in worship and when you're with God each day. Um, so I would say have fun, number one, uh, but then also prepare yourself. So read everything. Yes, read your Bible, get to know God, but also understand what people are living. Uh, people just having regular challenges in terms of COVID-19 now, looking for a job, wanting to buy a house, or save money, or uh, have to be a great parent, be a great student, be a great child just to read voraciously and have a love for learning and love for people. You do those things, you'll be successful with God. Some great advice. And just in general, what would you suggest for kids um, so they can get closer to God? Yeah, uh, so I would say at least two things. Number one, uh, find whatever your, your hobby is. You know, for some that may be writing and journaling, for others, it may be sports, which is fine, but find that place to kind of get into your own zone, into that space. And for me, when I get into my zone, I used to be a track and field runner. Um, so that's what I did in terms of athletics. When I was at church, I was an usher, but in that zone, it's kind of me and the gifts God's given me and me asking God to empower me to run the race or to usher that Sunday and to get in that zone and zone in and meet God there. So for me, kind of getting out of the rat race, I'm not trying to be somebody else, I'm not trying to beat someone else's record, I'm trying to be me. And when I can really master being me, my weaknesses, be honest about that, and my strengths, I think it allows God to come alongside of me and bring the best out of me in that season. So if you want to get to know God, kind of know what your hobby is, meet God there. Um, then also, don't be afraid to ask faithful questions. Um, I think that God's word, God can answer any questions that you have. And sometimes we don't want to ask certain things. We're not sure what God will say. Um, but I can I can be a disciple and love God and ask all the hard questions and wrestle with God. And God has never let me down, even I don't understand what God is doing. Yeah, some questions I feel like um, kids are too afraid to ask, like adults or like people at church. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's important to ask those questions. Just it is. Let me add one more thing, Milo, because because I think like, you know, we have cell phones. You can ask Siri, you can ask Google. And so we kind of feel like we want to get some very concrete answers from God. OK, God, so what's happening tomorrow at 551? And Siri can tell you when sunrise is, when the sunset is. But sometimes things with God are mystery. And so how do you how do you deal with that when you can't Siri God or Google God? You have to have faith. And that faith component uh, is so easy and so hard at the same time. Sometimes when life gets challenging. Yeah, for sure. So those are some pretty serious questions. So now we can move on to some less serious questions. Okay. So would you rather fast forward on your life, take a pause on your life, or rewind in your life? Ooh, um, I would say pause. You know, tomorrow has its own successes and accomplishments and trials. I'll get to that. Um, I think we'd always do some things over again, but it happened, you know, and uh, can't live with regret to move forward. So I would want to take a pause and really be present right now. Um, so much going on. You know, I feel I feel like when I was your age, I want to be a little bit older. You get a little bit older. I want to be a little bit more, a little bit more old. You get to my age, it's kind of like, okay, you know, 30s feels pretty, let's stay right here. Let's go backward. Mm -hmm. You get to be a mature adult. You want to get younger, you know, just enjoy the present. Um, um, being, being 30 is great. Being 20 was great. Being 15 was great. And always trying to be something that I'm not. No, let's be present right now and enjoy where we are with God. It's amazing. Let's yeah, I say I, I would say I'd be do the same thing. I mean, I would want to speed up just to see if like COVID would go away and how we would be like just going back to normal. But I also like enjoying things in the moment. Absolutely. So I have to say this. Good answer. Thing. Good answer. Would you rather go a week without your cell phone or a vehicle? Ooh, um, my vehicle, I can use my Uber, so vehicle. Week without vehicle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, who would you say makes the best breakfast, Cracker Barrel or, or IHOP? Cracker Barrel. Yeah, their syrup is the best. Yeah, absolutely. and it's warm too. Yeah. Um, did you want to be a pastor when you were a kid? I know I wanted to be a preacher, but I wouldn't say I would have said pastor until probably when I was like in college. Um, yeah, probably when I was in college, so I'll be a pastor, but definitely preacher. Would you rather have something savory or sweet? Hmm. I do like candy, so I'll probably say sweet, although I like both, but sweet would be my preference. Gotcha. Would you rather have chips or popcorn? Popcorn. Love popcorn. Uh, homemade especially. Yeah. My brother loves popcorn too. He'll make it every day. <laughs> would you rather have an iPhone or an Android? iPhone all day. Listen, I'm not going to advertise for Apple, but iPhone, iPad, MacBook Pro, let's get it. Apple all day. They sync well. You can send pictures. You can FaceTime. Just all right there. I'm an iPhone person too. I used to have an HP laptop. It was a Dell. And when I moved to the MacBook, I had like all these Apple classes I took on how to use it. It took me a while, but now that I, now that I have it, you know, there's no way it's no what I'd rather be. It's like learning, it's yeah. like Jesus, you know? It's great. It's definitely, I think it's much easier just like moving one file from something, you can just airdrop it instead of having to email it and all that. Yeah. Yes, saves time, you, it's more efficient, and you have to invest in what you want to invest in you. So yeah, might as well. Yeah. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Definitely a morning person. Definitely a morning person. Um, getting up early, it's easy for me. I can stay late if I have to, but I prefer to go to bed early and get up early. Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely the opposite. I could just sleep. I mean, I could stay up for a while, but I'll like, I cannot get up early in the morning every single day. Would you rather go on a island vacation or go on vacation where it's cold? Probably island vacation. If I had to choose, I, I like both. If I want to make a choice, let's get some sun, some sand, and some warm water. Yeah. If you were um, given tickets to either a Cardinals game or Blues game, which game would you go to? Ooh. Um, I think I went to a Cardinals game first. So I think I'm biased toward the Cardinals. But I like hockey, too. Um, I'll say baseball game. Yeah. Gotcha. Are you a dog person or a cat person? Dogs. No offense to those who like cats. I'm slightly allergic. Um, they're a little sneaky, I think. And but with dogs all day long. Team dog. Yeah, I'm probably a dog person too. I have a dog and just cats, they're just they're slower and they just they're not as I don't know. They just they move around. There's not just they don't I don't stick to them. Right. Would you rather have Popeyes or churches? <laughs> you know, I don't think I've, I may have had churches once or twice. So based on my own experience, I would say Popeyes, but I don't know if it's because I don't like churches, just haven't had it enough time. So with Popeyes. Yeah, I, we, I, we have Popeyes um, near our house and church is my mom said she's not a big fan. So we used to go there. Yeah, Popeyes. Who is your favorite gospel artist? That is such a hard question. Um, back in the day, it was Hezekiah Walker. Um, then it became Kirk Franklin. There are so many artists out there today I've recently you know, been to learn about. And so I could, I mean, I could talk all day long. Jonathan McReynolds um, is great. I like Tamela Mann. So on that one, I don't know. Um, there's so many. Yeah, I would have to say I would listen to Kirk Franklin a lot and Tam Tamla Mann. Okay. I think yeah. I listen to them a lot. Great. Would you rather have Hawaiian rolls or cornbread? <laughs> Ooh. What are we having with it? Are we having fried chicken? Is it Thanksgiving? Um, well, Thanksgiving. Let's say Thanksgiving. So it'd be greens and it could be fried chicken. It could be turkey. It could be any. I think for Thanksgiving, I'd rather have Hawaiian rolls. Yeah, but I like chili. And so I gotta have cornbread when, when possible with chili. Uh, or if I'm just having like like cabbage and a meat, I want cornbread with my cabbage. 
but uh, most often probably those Hawaiian rolls. Now, I'm gonna add something to that though. So when I have my Caribbean food or Caribbean food, I love festival, I love hush puppy, which is just fried cornbread. So catch, depending on what day you catch me, what the rest of the menu is like. Yeah, I like hush puppies too with fish and whatever, a big fish fry and all of that. Would you rather have um, Nike or Adidas? Nike. Now I just started getting into Adidas uh, my son loves Adidas, so I may be transitioning, uh, but I've been a Nike guy for a while, yeah. Gotcha. Um, LeBron James or um, Stephen Curry? Yeah. Um, um, ooh, these are hard questions. Yeah. I'm different players. I, I guess LeBron, um, I'd have to say LeBron, you know, right now. Um, uh, before my son would be Steph Curry. He knows the whole team. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I say the wrong right now. I would have to say the same thing. Okay. Um, would you rather have um, Jordans or Vans? Probably Jordans. Yeah, same for me. Would you rather have Emos or Pizza Hut? So, no offense, but you know, I'm not from here. And so for me, Emos is an acquired taste, not a bad taste. It's just different. So I'm going to have to say, uh, you said Pizza Hut? Yes. I'm going to have to say Pizza Hut. Gotcha. What's your favorite part of St. Louis? Hmm. Just like. Probably, probably Forest Park. So I love, I love Forest Park. Um, uh, the, the trails, the little scooter things, the, the water, being my water, being in nature. I love that. So all the parks, I would say, are my favorite parts of St. Louis. Yeah, I like just um, downtown. Downtown's really fun. And just the different, just walking around, looking at the different shops and all that. It's all, it's cool. all really fun. That's yeah, cool. Okay, for my last question. Okay. Would you rather have Burger King or McDonald's? McDonald's, now once again, you know, there are things at BK that I love, like the onion rings. They're not real, they're fake, but I like to eat them. But there's something about chicken nuggets, french fries, back in the day I get a strawberry shake. They just, there's nothing that's like McDonald's. They had, a, they had a two for one, two for a dollar apple pie back in the day. I'm dating myself now, I don't know how much they cost now. Uh, I used to love McDonald's. Um, I don't go there much anymore, but uh, definitely Mickey D's over Burger King. Yeah. yeah, I would have to say the same thing. I love their fries. They have to be hot though, if they're cold. Yeah. And they have to be seasoned too. If they're not seasoned, it's not as good. But I have to say McDonald's too. Okay, good, good. Well, thanks for answering, thanks for answering my questions. You're very welcome, you're very welcome.